Hello and welcome to this video on Slurm. Slurm is the fictional futuristic soft drink of Futurama. It's something of a parody to Coca-Cola and what we feel it's best compared to as a current comparison. Slurm first appears to the best of our knowledge in Futurama as a standalone topic in the episode Fry and the Slurm Factory, this being yet another parody. This episode is important as it also gives us most of our information and what we need to know about Slurm to identify and describe it. We know it is mostly considered a soft drink as it is distributed by the Bureau of Soft Drinks, Tobacco and Firearms. It is fluorescent green and made on the planet Wormulon. Slurm, as its true nature is concerned, is actually a secretion from a giant worm this giant worm being the Slurm Queen. The Queen can make several different varieties of Slurm. The more mundane version we see in a can, a super concentrated form, and a particular variety intended to convert someone into a Queen. Slurm is supposed to be highly addictive, and Super Slurm more so, almost so compelling that it can force someone to continuously consume it. Okay, now that we know just about everything that is readily apparent in Futurama about Slurm, let's look at what it could be. We are fortunate that there are several beverages that are made now and historically with animal secretions like Slurm. There are two obvious examples, mead and cumus. Mead is made from honey, while cumus is made from milk. This means humans are not exactly ignorant of drinking other species' secretions, but nothing with such a vibrant green colour. Milk is probably the best comparison to Slurm, but rarely is it bought in a can. Like most beverages, such as Slurm, it is something sugar-rich, and milk in this case is rich in lactose. This would be important in a carbonated beverage. Carbonation is something known as canes, and the sugar is called bricks. Brix is spelt as B-R-I-X. To make the beverage potable, there would need to be a lot of sugar. This counteracts the bitter taste of the carbonation process. As with milk or honey, there is a lot of sugar. And this would be necessary part of any carbonated beverage made the way Slurm is. Honey and milk both have relatively high amounts of sugar within them and this compensates for some of the other things that are in there that would otherwise alter the flavour. It is the addictive element of Slurm that is so interesting in this case. We can think of it in a similar way to that of insects, particularly the honeybee. A honeybee colony has a queen. The queen will secrete a pheromone. This pheromone does a variety of things. The most important one for people looking at bees is that it causes the workers to become sterile, but it also imparts the queen with almost absolute control over the hive. That's not something that's readily consumed. What is readily consumed and produced from an animal is toad venom. Toad venom comes from a gland that will excrete a toxin. This toxin is actually a psychedelic product, similar to LSD and other drugs. The impact of this particular drug will start in less than 30 seconds of consumption. The effect of it though is that it can incapacitate the person who's taken it for half an hour or more. It will also alter their perceptions of reality. These two scenarios don't quite fit with what we know of Slurm. It is addictive, but certainly not in the same way. It is possible that Slurm is more akin to bee honey than anything else. This is where the pheromones might come in, or something very similar. Pheromones could explain to drive to consume it. The problem is how they could get a pheromone or pheromone-like compound that is effective across species. This is not impossible as pheromones are extremely diverse, and as noted in this excerpt from American Scientist, pheromones are chemical signals that have evolved for communication between members of the same species. 
a pheromone signal elicits a specific reaction in the receiver, for example, a stereotyped behavior, releaser effect, or a developmental process, primer effect. Some pheromones can have both effects. All sorts of molecules, large and small, have been found acting as pheromones. Depending on whether the message is sent out on wind or water currents or placed directly on the nose or antennae of the recipient. For this reason, it is entirely possible that there could be a pheromone within the slurm that is either creating a positive response and training the consumer to desire it more, or possibly a direct signal to imbibe it as some sort of positive feedback loop, something that would impart loyalty to the queen of the slurm. There is a second role for pheromones, and especially in insects, and this gives more credence to the idea that perhaps this is what is in the slurm. In insects that have a very social behaviour, such as bees, ants and so on, they need to be able to select which larvae will become the next queen. This is primarily done by using pheromones. The larvae is given a specific pheromone and specific food in the form of royal jelly. They're fed this specifically because that would cause them to develop into the queen. The initiation for this is a pheromone. We see in one episode that Leela is likely to be turned into a queen. This is done by putting her into a specially selected slurm variant that this would then cause her to change into a queen and create a less desirable version of slurm. The benefits of this would be that it matches largely what we see in insect-based hives and those with social elements producing pheromones. It would also give further credence to the idea that perhaps slurm contains a pheromone that is somehow acting across species. The limitations to this are simple. Slurm, as it is shown in Futurama, is probably not even remotely possible. Even our most prolific animal producers cannot meet the kind of demand seen in Futurama as far as slurm production goes. Slurm by itself is not completely impossible. We can see how the raw product could be made on a very small scale. It could be addictive, and in fact pure slurm could cause queen development. What we don't see is how one creature, even the slurm queen, could produce enough without eventually dying in the kind of volume seen in the show. This means that although yes, theoretically possible, but the production method as depicted is simply not feasible. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you might have below.